All right. Jefferson's Malort down the hatch. Hello and welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel, and in just a moment, I'm about to taste Jefferson's Malort for the first time ever. But before we do that, we need to answer a few questions. What is Malort? What does it taste like? And why would anyone in Chicago drink this stuff? The year is 1920. Prohibition has just begun, and people all over the country are drinking anything they can get their hands on. Carl Jepsen, a Swedish immigrant to Chicago, starts producing a traditional Swedish wormwood liqueur. According to the Jepsen's Malort website, he's able to get around prohibition liquor laws by selling it as a medicinal product. Law enforcement believes him after tasting it and coming to the conclusion that no one would ever willingly want to drink this stuff. Years later, Prohibition ends and Carl Jepsen begins producing Malort in its current form. At this point, it's being sold with a piece of wormwood literally inside the bottle. In the early 2010s, Malort begins growing in popularity due to word of mouth and social media, partly as a hangover cure and partly as a rite of passage in the Chicago bar scene, probably because of how bad it tastes. So what does it taste like? Well, I've seen it described online as gasoline, hairspray, runoff from Lake Michigan, and used band-aids. So this should be a lot of fun. All right, well, I guess I can't put this off any longer. Oh God, <laughs> oh God, uh, uh. <laughs> oh my God, that's terrible. I don't even have any water over here. That is so bad. Uh. There are herbal qualities to it. I like bitter stuff. I thought I could handle this. I was wrong. This is the worst thing I've ever drank. All I can taste here is like gasoline. It's just lingering in my mouth. One thing that's concerning to me is how messed up these bottles are. My buddy Max sent me these from Chicago and there was a little bit of spillage or leakage on, in transport. And if you can see this, the label is all messed up. So the liquor itself just completely, completely destroyed the packaging. So that's what I just drank. And I do have a lot of concerns about what's gonna be happening in my system. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make two cocktails, two from some really good bartenders. I've never had the drinks themselves. The recipes themselves look pretty good on spec. Um, and then I'm gonna try to whip something up myself. I have an idea for what I'm gonna do with this. I've never done it before, but I think it's gonna work. Or at least I hope it is. This, oh, this was worse than I thought it was gonna be. So it's possible that my drink is not gonna work, but we'll see. All right, this is the Jepson's Malort Challenge. And honestly, this feels like an episode of Jackass. Like, why am I doing this? Okay, wow. So that was obviously a lot worse than I was expecting it to be. This is going to be a good learning experience though. If we can make Malort taste good, we can make anything taste good. Our first drink is an unnamed gem from Paul McGee, the bartender behind Chicago's famous Lost Lake Tiki Bar. I first found this recipe and the next one in a Chicago Reader article published way back in 2009. First up is half an ounce of Malort. Is that a lot? Seems like a lot. Do we really need that much Malort in here? Next up is three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're following that with three quarters of an ounce of orange juice. And now it's time for an ounce and a half of tequila. Paul's recipe calls for Blanco tequila, but I'm gonna go with the lightly aged Reposado tequila. Now we're going to add ice and give all that a shake. Glassware for this is a Collins or highball glass, but a pint glass will work fine too if that's all you have. And last but not least, we're topping the whole thing off with two ounces of ginger beer. If you used a pint glass, you may want to measure this out as opposed to just eyeballing it. A larger glass will lead to your proportions getting out of whack. We're serving it with a bamboo straw from Holy City Straws and garnishing with a piece of homemade crystallized ginger. There we have it, Paul McGee's Malort Highball. Let's give it a taste. That's not bad. It's very gingery. The Malort itself is not dominant. It kind of has some Moscow Mule vibes. It's got like a tequila mule type situation. If someone was like, you have to drink some Jepson's Malort, this is an okay way to do it. This isn't bad. Moving on, our next drink is the hard sell from bartender Brad Bolt. First in our shaker, three quarters of an ounce of Malort. Next is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. After that, three quarters of an ounce of St. Germain elderflower liqueur. If you're wondering why it's in this non-standard bottle, it's because I stole this from my mom. And lastly, three quarters of an ounce of London dry gin. Now let's add ice and give it a shake before straining it into a cocktail. For garnish, we're gonna take a grapefruit peel and give it a twist to express its oils over the drink. There we have it, the hard sell. Now, let's give it a try.
Hmm. That's good. I like that. The bitterness from the, the Malort is blended really well. Grapefruit is the dominant flavor for me here, and I don't think I squeeze an inordinate amount of grapefruit on this. There's an aftertaste to it that is very heavy on the Malort. It's very tart. There's no sweetener in there. The sweetest thing in there is, is probably the Saint Germain, which is not an overly sweet product. Um, I think this could benefit from a little bit of simple syrup in there just to kind of help balance it out a little bit, but that's not bad. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I could drink one of those. All right, and now for my take on a Malort cocktail. I'm gonna use bartender Danny Shapiro's Weathered Axe, another famous Chicago cocktail, as the template for this one. If you haven't already, check out my video on the Weathered Axe after you're done watching this one. First up is half an ounce of ginger syrup. We know from our highball earlier that ginger works really well with the Malort, so I think we're off to a good start. Next is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice and half an ounce of orange liqueur. I'm using dry curacao, but you can use triple sec or Cointreau or whatever you have on hand. Okay, now here's where we're gonna diverge from the weathered axe. Instead of using a white wine aperitif like Coqui Americano or Lille Blanc, we're gonna sub in half an ounce of Malort. Malort tastes nothing like those two, but I actually feel really good about this. I think it's gonna work. And finally, an ounce and a half of bourbon. Use an overproof bourbon like Wild Turkey 101 if you can get your hands on it. All right, let's give it a shake. And we're gonna dump the whole thing into a lowball glass. So what I'm calling this is the Malort Axe. I'm gonna give this a try. I've never tried this drink. It's completely new. Let's see how it goes. Honestly, that's really good. That's probably my favorite of the three. I think the bourbon works really well here. The ginger and the Malort play really well together here. This is a good drink. Uh, this should be served in bars throughout Chicago, but I'm not a bartender in Chicago, so I can't make that happen. All right, so let's wrap this up. These were all pretty good. This one is probably my favorite. I did not expect it to be. It was really just a rip. These are both good as well. This one for me, the ginger beer kind of dominated. I didn't get anything but ginger beer. This one is good as well, but honestly, it just tasted a lot like grapefruit. That's really good. I'm Honestly, I'm gonna make that again. I have a lot of Malort to use up. I've got a bunch of minis over here that need to get used up. They're gonna get used up here in this drink. This is the one to make. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw here, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I don't often drink terrible stuff. Let me know if you've ever had Jepson's Malort in the comments below. Let me know how you like to drink it below. If you just drink it as a shot, I wanna hear about it. Cheers.